and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome once more with the boom uh, culture. Just as I told you last week that we are going to meet again today for another session of the boom culture. Right on this platform today we are going to enjoy it and I hope you guys home you are going to enjoy it too like me. So I would like to say you are welcome for the evening and the boom culture will lead you for tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, bonsoir, 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 madame et monsieur, bonsoir. Il est bien vrai que je vous avais donné un rendez-vous samedi prochain, que on doit se revoir aujourd'hui. Et nous voici, nous sommes là avec le boom culture. Et j'espère bien que nous allons rouler ensemble jusqu'à la fin de cette émission. Sur ce plateau aujourd'hui, nous avons euh, les invités très très importants, très très spéciaux, et que je sais bien qu'il y a certains de vous qui les connaissent déjà sur ce plateau, et nous allons parler dans bientôt. Je vous attends et nous allons écouter ce qu'ils vont dire. Bonne sera, bonne sera, bonne sera. Sono vraiment contento oggi ancora de être qui. Come sabato scorso io avevo detto a voi che ci vediamo sabato prossimo, che sarebbe oggi. E oggi siamo ancora qui avec le boom coach e l'imosta davanti a voi. E je spero che dobbiamo camminare insieme per questa sera. Donc, euh, per non prendere troppo tanti di vostri tempi, oggi con noi abbiamo veramente i... i e, e, le gente che abbiamo invitato per sette emissioni di oggi e che je spero che voi ascolterete tante cose e aspettiamo anche di vostra partecipazione da casa. Chi che piacerebbe chiamare per comunicarci, per dare un aiuto, una contribuzione sul discorso che abbiamo oggi sarà il numero sarà su, davanti a voi e che ognuno può chiamare. Allora, per non perdere tanto tempo vostri, io passerò alla mia destra, c'è il signor Christian Tawa. Che io lo so che tanti di voi lo conosci già. E nella mia sinistra abbiamo e Chief Obina. Right. You are welcome, Chief Thank Obina. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure to be here. You are welcome, Mr. Tawa. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Limo. Uh, thank you, Televias. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you, followers of uh, Africa Media. Uh, thank you, all our followers, more stars, uh, followers. We are here tonight to deliberate and bring our own contributions to some few topics that are going to have maybe an impact on uh, our society and, and to us as a whole. So thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. Oh, well, it's uh, my great pleasure to be in this wonderful platform. Thank you for having me and believing that tonight uh, the contribution is going to make sense and um, it's going to be a great one that people will be able to derive something from it. So thank you so much for having me once again. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my guest. Actually, <clears throat> I would just like to tell you guys that uh, 
The topic again for today, we are going to talk about the migration of immigrants. That's our brothers and sisters who are living from Africa to look for a bread in Europe. We don't know which part of Europe they are going to, but actually we just have to discuss something in that in general. Pour vous rappeler encore ce soir sur quel sujet nous allons débattre, nous avons ce débat ce soir, nous allons parler sur l'immigration, nos frères et sœurs qui quittent l'Afrique pour l'Europe juste parce qu'ils veulent améliorer leur, leur vie ou quoi. Donc je viens encore une fois de plus de vous rappeler, comme ça... En attendant, chacun doit se préparer ce qu'il doit donner comme une contribution ou quoi. Et encore, à yo dirò à voi, lì à casa, que cette sera, quello que abbiamo pour parler encore, cette sera, dobbiamo parler de l'immigration. Parce que, ogni volta, vediamo que nos fratelli et sorelli qui cercano de traverser, de scappare de l'Afrique, Europa. A tutto è colpa della difficoltà, dobbiamo ancora parlare di questo problema stasera. Allora così ognuno che ha qualcosa per contribuire può prepararsi intanto che cominciamo la discussione. Per non andare lontano io chiederò alla regia di darci un po' di, di musica Così possiamo prepararci tranquillamente e entriamo nella nostra discussione. Je vais demander la regia de nous donner un peu de musique parce que en attendant que nous préparons nos voix, il faut qu'il y ait quelque chose qui nous qui nous soutienne ou quoi. So regia, la musique, give us some music while we are preparing ourselves for the discussion. The debate is going to be long. Thank you.
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Merci beaucoup, merci beaucoup. Vraiment, euh, ce que nous allons parler ce soir, je pense que tout le monde euh, est au courant de ce qui se passe en Afrique. En Afrique, euh, nous voyons que nos frères et sœurs, nous nous fuyons l'Afrique à cause de la difficulté, à cause des de problèmes et toutes sortes, toutes sortes de problèmes que nous avons euh, en Afrique. Et ces problèmes-là, nous, nous, nous ne pouvons pas dire que ça vient d'un seul côté. Donc euh, aujourd'hui, nous allons essayer un peu de parler. Mais quand on regarde le monde entier, le monde entier dit que le, le, le problème d'Afrique vient de la France. Mais aujourd'hui, nous allons essayer un peu de parler sur ça pour voir vraiment à quel niveau que la France contribue au problème de l'Afrique. Actually, as we can see, we are, we are all here tonight to talk about the situation in which our brothers and sisters are struggling to leave Africa for a better future. And what we can see is just that most of them end up into the Mediterranean Sea. Not even half of them are able to complete the journey. So some people are saying that France is the cause. Others are saying that it's due to other problems. So actually, today we are going to talk about this issue or we'll debate on it just to know what actually could be the cause of the Africans running away from Africa. Stasera veramente ci vede che gli tantissimi africani che cercano di scappare dall'Africa per colpa della vita difficile, cercano di scappare per entrare in Europa, per cercare di, di migliorare la loro vita e neanche metà di loro riescono a completare questa strada perché tanti di loro vanno a finire nella Mediterranea. E veramente oggi dobbiamo parlare un po'. Tanti gente dicono che la Francia è la colpa di tutti questi problemi. Oggi dobbiamo parlare un po' per vedere veramente fino a quel, a quale, a quel punto che la Francia dà la difficoltà agli africani. Sappiamo che ci sono quasi 54 paesi che scappano ogni giorno dall'Africa e che la Francia proprio veramente ha in mano su tutti i suoi colonizzazioni e tutti i paesi che aveva colonizzato e oggi dobbiamo parlare un po' insieme per sapere come questa storia è. Così a mio a destra chiederò signor Tawa per dirci un po' cosa che pensa lui su questo argomento. So, Mr. Christian, actually, people are saying that the problem of this uh, movement from Africa to Europe, children are running, some are dying, is actually because of the difficulties that France has put into the African countries. So actually, I don't know, what can you tell me about this situation? Uh, <clears throat> thanks for the question. We cannot uh, capitalize on, on the fact that it's France uh, alone that is in charge or is the cause of uh, making people to migrate from Africa to Europe. It's uh, the whole European continent that is involved in the whole thing, Europe and America. Most precisely Europe, because after the, <coughs> the Berlin Conference, when they made uh, the partition of Africa, most of the European countries were concerned. So uh, it's not only France. France may be <coughs> the major uh, country that is promulgating this by his activities that are being carried out of the ground on the countries that are his colonies. And France is still struggling to 
imposes new colonialism in these countries that he occupied once. And I have just given a documentary uh, independence without <coughs> giving the people a full whole the of full their independence. independence. So uh, what is there is that uh, the France, we can hold France responsible uh, concerning the African countries that he is the uh, colonial master. But uh, well, we should know that all these African, all the European countries, 99.9% uh, .9 of them are also the cause. Now, uh, what makes these countries, uh, uh, what makes people struggling to move out of these various countries is because France have met that type of neocolonialism in a such way that France is putting a stooge to rule in front and France is behind dictating the, uh, the governance and the, the means, the, 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 the system of ruling. So these people are just mere figureheads taking orders from your masters. As dictatorship, as we can yeah, say. So uh, France is dictating, following its interests. France is not doing anything for the interests of the, the nations. Uh, so anybody that France sees that uh, is going to go against or contrary to his decisions or is going to do anything that will affect uh, his interests, France is going to fight back immediately. So uh, the whole problem is bad governance. It's bad governance because all these states that France is controlling, you see most of the leaders, are, if you are not for France, they are all old people, the old generation, people that studied in France, people whom France prepared them and sent them to come and, and do the, the governance. And they are not doing it um, on the basis for the interests of, of the, the common people. man of the citizens, but they are doing it uh, for the interests of France, because France is uh, keeping them there, and because they have this ego egoistic tendency to stay, uh, to click in power, they are forced because France is guaranteeing them that, okay, you know, if you have to stay there for long as you want, we can allow you to stay there for long as you want, you do whatever you want, so, so far you adhere to our conditions on what we want and do our and, and, and beat our interests. So these African countries, all these people, if you look at all the African countries, you see that all the presidents, especially these princes, these countries that are under the French um, uh, 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 rule before, all of them, they have this bad economy. They have the, the standard of living is too low because the people are not living. The people are living from crumbs. France is enriching himself from the resources of these countries, taking the resources of these countries, building their own country with it. You see the country, France is imposing a simple currency, a franc currency, yeah, which is not needed in France. And minus that, I heard they give 85% uh, of their gross Profit in Africa, each country has to give it to France. And all these countries, as you see them like that, they don't have a central bank. They don't have a central bank. Their central bank is in France. Why can you people future. have a country that you have a central bank in another country? Who is dictating? Who's, who's, uh, your money, does, the France CFA does not have any power. It doesn't have any, uh, any bargaining power. It's a fixed money. It's something that is fixed. It doesn't have a viral. You see the euro and the dollars, they, they fluctuate. That's how a currency should to work. So if somebody else is determining your, your, is, is determining the cost of your, your living, <laughs> you, you don't have anything. So these countries are so fragile, these people are so, the dictators that are living in, the citizens are so for, uh, frustrated, they are so um, malnourished, they have this low economic standard, and they are forced now to live. They want to go somewhere where they think that they can have a better future, and when most of them, and most of the routes that they take are very dangerous routes, like the sea, the desert, and all these place, places that you said before in your introduction, that uh, most, 80, about 60% of them or 70% of them, they never reach their destinations. So, who is the cause? It's not France that is driving the people out. Indirectly, France is driving them out, but the people France is maintaining to power are the people causing these people to leave because you look at countries in Africa, all those countries, Mali, Cameroon, uh, Chad, all these countries around, you see them like that. Everyday people are going out. They are going out because 
They cannot do it. You have uh, graduates coming out of schools. They cannot have jobs. So what do you expect them to do? <clears throat> they have to go somewhere where they can fend for themselves and have their own families. Whereas the resources are there. If we have good governance, if they say um, real de democracy is existing, and then they have good governance, people will not have any reasons to be running their countries and coming to Europe. So uh, for my introduction, that's what I will say for now. And during the course of our debate or our discussions tonight, will throw more light on the issue the of uh, immigrants. So thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tower. Actually, it's not uh, an easy situation because after all what we have in Africa, all the raw materials, mines and so on, bronze and so on, everything we have in Africa, but yet we still run Africa to look for a better place in Europe. Actually, I don't know what really is the problem. So, Chief uh, Obin, uh, what actually do you have to tell us? What, is, what are your opinion in this uh, movement? Um, well, um, Chief Limosta, honestly speaking, I must appreciate you for giving me this wonderful opportunity to be part of your great platform and uh, at the same time, I want to extend my wonderful greetings to Afro Quattro for their availability and opportunity also to air our views and objectives to the public. And um, at the same time, I want to say I love you all, my family, my fans, my way with us. So, um, based on this um, topic, uh, I, want to, I want to go a bit fundamental by saying, in my own opinion, that there are three problems in Africa. And um, these three problems uh, are problems that we can solve it. But the only way we can solve it is to, to to bring a call for orientation, you know. First, we have problem of information. We have big problem of information. And uh, in the life of man, when man is not informed, he will only be deformed. So you look at that word information, at the same time, you look at the other word deformation. When you are not informed, you can only be deformed. So this is the major problem of Africa. And that's why you see we seem infiltrated. Our leaders are so infiltrated. And there is this inferiority complex within our leaders. You know, sometimes we think it's all about our color. Sometimes they think they cannot make it. Sometimes they go too low to the international community because um, they don't know what they are being made up of. But and what, what I think also is that with the control and the suppression from France, if you don't have to yeah. match the way France wants you to match, yes, there me, will be a problem. Yeah, let me let me come. Let yeah. me let me come. You know, when I'm talking about information, for example, let's talk about slave trade. You know, uh, uh, slave trade. The the, the 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 Portuguese, when they came to Africa, they had information. They were quite informed. Now my question is. How were they been able to infiltrate Africa? You can't buy material that is not of use to you. First of all, they might have gone to study what do we do with this human being? And for us to buy them, how do we get them? And to whom do we meet? And who, you know, you see, most of our chief those days, they collected money from them. A lot of people were being sold and all that. Those collecting the money, are they white people? The question is yeah, no. In now, in that in that aspect, I would say they are being deformed. The, the the Africans are being deformed. Something was hidden that they've not been able to discover. That is when I talk about information. For example, here now, you know, the white people they focus on television. Before they wake up the next day, they will know whether it's going to rain or it's going to snow. Or what will be the next program? Do we wear face masks? Do we stay home? And all these kind of things. But in, Af in Africa, we lack information. But to me, I think that that situation of you saying that the Africans have been, were being deformed, 
Yeah. To me, I, I see it as they were self-centered. Yes. They have that self-centered in them that they don't care about the next person. Yeah, All it, they care about is about their pockets. Yes, you remember what I said. You remember what I said, that the only way we can solve this problem is what? Call for orientation. Orientation. That is where we'll be able to preach love. We'll be able to teach people what and what they need to know about themselves. Because historically, some of African leaders today, they don't know where they come from. But they, how can we call for orientation when the, the, the person governing us will never permit us to have that kind of, of a meeting? For example, France, that is suppressing the African countries, will never permit the African countries to take a step that will be for his disadvantage. Okay, now let me come. You understand? Let me, let me come. Let me come. There are two types of human being. There are so many school of thoughts which people uh, 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 have as their own standard. You know, philosophically, we have uh, a particular school of thought that is called positivism. And this positivism school of thought is where we have two class of people. Number one, the sovereignty. Number two, the subject. Where the sovereignty feels that they are supreme. And the subject have nothing than to obey. That is where you see our leaders acting like boss. That's where you see our leaders acting inappropriate and misformed. Because one, the lack of orientation. There was no political standard. There was no room. So when they come in as in, you know, in Africa those days, when they talk about defining politics, they say it's all about who gets what, when, and how. So, and when you see politics in that, this aspect now, that is when you be able to classify politicians as positivists. Because the only thing they do is that when they struggle, they get the power, they, they, they look for Koboka and start flogging the, the subject, <laughs> which is the people that they are ruling. <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. So in this aspect now, they are being misinformed. So we have misplacement of priorities in Africa. Those who are leading Africa today, they don't go to school. All African leaders, they don't go to school. They don't know their history. Before you be a president of America, you must study the history of America. Like Italy, you can't just, somebody can't just wake up because he thinks that he's being loved by a so group of people. He come out with his money and all that. Before you know it, he becomes the president. What do you think that person will be able to offer? In these our modern days, you find out that so many leaders have been misinformed. It's all about money, dealing with others the way you want. So that's when, like, sorry, you, the way you came in, I was talking about information. Africa, we lack information. We don't know who we are. We don't know how we exist. We don't know how we're going to solve our problem. So when the other world, they see this kind of aspect, or let me say characteristics in us, what do they do? They are profit. They have to make, they have to profit it. That's why you see, some, you, you go to Uganda, you see white man walking, Africa will be saying, oh, Muzungi, Muzungi, Muzungi will be doing like this. You come to a white man country, you find out, why do you call Muzungi? Show me what that power you have. What is it that I will learn from you? Because one, we are here, we are being informed. You've been able to know who you are. So you don't attach value to colors. You don't attach value to so many things. But those in Africa, they lack appropriate information. And this positivism is a big problem, followed by ethnic diversities. Africa cannot manage their differences. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm Somebody will say, I'm from Batibo, I you're from Limbe. No, 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 no. Limbe people not so, so, so they be. Somebody will say, I'm from South Nigeria. Somebody will say, I'm from North. No, 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 we are not brothers. So how can Africa go ahead? So when you see this situation now, the most intelligent ethnic, or let me say, national team can infiltrate us. They can come in and say, oh, these people, they are foolish. Okay, let's begin to buy them off. Africa will have the most raw things to develop Africa. Djibouti today is African country, but go there, the majority are white people because they are busy, Chinese taking uranium. You go to Nigeria, go to Cameroon, they are busy taking our, because Africa is a raw continent. The weather is the best, everything is the best. So, but when we are being deformed, yeah, the wise world will come in and begin to make 
use of what we have and begin to put us where we think we belong. So we do respect, sir. I think these are the three major problems of Africa. Number one is lack of information. That is lack of appropriate education. Education is not about obtaining certificate and running out of school. Because of that, you are qualified to be a president. OK, now let me go ahead. No, that's not what I mean by education. One must be granted appropriately in who are you, what are you, how can we go, and what can we do? What are the genetic makeup of that so-called African man or African woman? When you be able to know all these things, you find out that the acquisition of wealth is not what we are looking for. Or so many things. You can see in Africa, someone who owns like 50 cars. You ask him, why are you driving 50? Yeah, I'm a billionaire. But they come in the Western world, you see billionaire, they have only one car. And the car they have is not even that type of car. Africa, the young boy, guys of my age, they go for Rolls Royce and so many things. But here you see real millionaires, they don't have such car. It's not that they cannot afford it, but they have information and knowledge of what to do with their wealth. So that's why I say, Africa, we are deformed. So in as much as we are deformed, we begin to have this problem of what to do. And at the end of the day, you see people who think they are wise will come in and begin to make use of us, deal with us. However, because if a white man come and infiltrate I and you, is that he will buy me or he will buy you? At the end of the day, they will leave confusion between me and you. <laughs> and we begin to struggle with ourselves. So, um, with due respect, I, I also maintain uh, strongly that problem, major problem of Africa is deformation, problem of positivism, at the same time, diversities in all aspects, both ethnic and otherwise. Thank you so much, sir. Well, uh, thank you, Chief Obina. Actually, we've heard from you that uh, the most important problem with the Africans is lack of education, of information. But actually, what you are saying should be something that, to my own point of view, maybe it's about 20% of actually the whole problem. Because when you have a leader who tells you what to do, and how to do and when to do, actually you are not, you don't have your liberty. So even if the African countries are struggling to bring down themselves together, the Europeans, the Europeans as a whole, they will never like to see the Africans to make a good step that could unite the Africans together. My late brother sang of Africa Unite. But I believe till the Europeans will get to their debt, they will never want to see any good thing to come out between the reunification of Africans. It will be a problem to them. And that's why even today, the France we are talking of, France is messing up Africa, getting what he wants from Africa, from Africa, making the Africans to suffer, die, but nobody is talking to France and nobody can hear from the Africans. If not, I will actually say thanks to our sister, Dr. Arikiana, who is there out there fighting for the liberation, fighting for the Africans to get up from sleep, fighting for the Africans to know how important Africa is. When we talk of Mama Africa, actually, we are talking about Dr. Arikiana. We know that she is really fighting for us. We know that she's fighting for the Africans. But all what I want to say is just that the Africans also, they should get up. Because it's not easy. If really we want Africa to be for the Africans, then the Africans, they have to get up. Well, I would like to ask the Regia to give us some video in which Mama Arikiana tried to talk, to express her feelings, and to expose certain things, that some, some of the clauses that were in the terms under what the French government 
made some Africa countries to sign. So, Regia. Our people must know the truth and nothing but the truth. So France remains as a member of the UN Security Council. And yet France today remains one of the biggest perpetrators of human rights violations in Africa. And everybody is giving it, the world is giving it a blind eye. United Nations. It is a body that's supposed to be the watchdog for human rights violations. France remains the biggest risk to peace and security in Africa today. And nobody is talking about it. France did something absolutely deplorable made the former colonists, because they still are colonized, sign a document which they called the Pact for the Continuation of Colonization. Dig this. On one hand, we're giving you your independence. But on the other hand, sign this document that you are agreeing to continue to be colonized. So two countries said, no way, Jose. We are doing this, Guinea and Mali. The French could not understand it. How could an African country dare not want to be affiliated with France? So in their anger, <clears throat> history tells us that they went into those two countries, took everything that they thought they had brought, proceeded to pour concrete into the sewage pipes, completely devastating the two economies. This was also done as a way of letting the other countries know that should you refuse to sign this document, this is the fate that awaits you. So the rest of the country signed the pact for the continuation of colonization remains in place. What is special about this? The pact for the continuation of colonization said, one, you shall deposit 85% of your bank reserves with the French Central Bank under the control of the French Minister of Finance. The French government will take all your monies, collectively invest your monies in the French stock market under the French name. And you don't have to know what the returns are. Should you wish to access some of your money, Keep in mind, the countries are now left with only 15% 15 of their reserves. You have to submit your country's financial report. And if I yeah, ladies and gentlemen, you've heard it all. Even though it's not easy to see those images, but uh, you've heard it all. How France gave independent and no independent to his, his or her colonies. Actually, Mr. Tawa, what uh, actually can you tell us about uh, what we've just seen? Well, uh, uh, Dr. Tila is just hitting the nail on the, on, on the cob. But uh, we just have to get some facts very, very straight. And we try to see how we can substantiate that with practical uh, examples and everything that we can see. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chief Obina talked about uh, lack of information and uh, uh, other things in Africa. Those things, I have to tell uh, Chief Obina that Poverty is the cause of Africa, is, is the reason that Africans are moving out of Africa. Wars is another reason. Dictatorial governments is another reason. Who are the people uh, plowing or walking these things behind the scene? The uh, Europeans and France. France is walking these things in. Uh, the African colonial countries, because he has interest. All our resources are carried away. So if you are any African leader who does not want to dance to the tune of the French, you are kicked out of the whole system. 
And Mr. Ngonga Emmanuel talked about egoism, self-centeredness. Those are the points, those are the intriguing points that the, 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 the colonial master, that is, child, that is France, is telling our leaders that we will allow you, steal as you can, build good houses, have good cars, all for yourself. Live good trade, then have that for yourself, then impound on the others, so that they should not see what we can do. I leave you, you do your own, and then I take the rest. What I can tell you is that he will offer you. You can, you can think that you are stealing. You can even have 100 million. You think there's 100 million. 1% of what you are taking, France is dropping more than 80% of that same thing. So that is what is that? Because if you see, for example, all the young African leaders who have come and dared to confront France have met uh, early death. That's true. Yes. Or they kick you out of power, or they, 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 they put you somewhere like Sankaras and all these new yeah. leaders from Mali who are coming up now today is having problems. France cannot prone coup d'etats in some other countries and condemn coup d'etats in other countries. What is their essence of doing that? The reason is just simple. When the coup d'etat in Mali, in Guinea came, France condemned it. In Mali, it condemned it. Why? Because the people who came told France in their face that we are tired of you people. We have to put our country straight. We will not work according to your terms. And we have the basic right. It's our obligation to work with any country of our choice. You have to give us. We have gotten our independence. I want to exercise our independence. What does France do? France termed them bad people, like Asimi Goita, and then went around, influenced this, our old leaders who are in place for 20, 30 years, that have been war, that has been France puppets, tell them go to your meeting, go to say they out, put an embargo, economic embargo on this on this country so that they should suffer. That then they will bow down on our knees. But I appreciate the young guys, 37 years old, is standing his ground. You make an economy, you give an, you make a money for people, you make a currency for large quantity of African countries. In France, you cannot even use that money. How can you be the master of their money and then they cannot even use that money? You carry CFA, you go to France with it, they don't even know that money. You go to any place in France, they don't even know it. They want you to do everything on the euros. Now, African leaders and rulers, they use the divide and rule, as Obina said. It's a divide and rule. They will tell you, create tribalism. Say, bring this man to knock this man's head. Say this man is this man from this tribe, this man is this tribe. Then you people are fighting. And then they stay in and do whatever they have to do. That is a technique. That is a government technique that the French people advise our African leaders. Not that our African leaders do not go to school. They are intelligent. They have studied. But they don't want to do what they have studied because of greed. And because they are working under somebody. Their master is watching them and is telling them what to do. And they are just obeying others. They are not ruling for the interests of the, the common people. They are not ruling for the African people. That is why you see these people are fed up. In the countries that they dare to get these dictators, a war broke out. Look now in Cameroon, there is war. Look in, uh, in Mali, there is war. All over the whole place, there is war. Afghanistan, there is war. That is why you see when these wars are coming, or what do people do? The French people, they send in their armament, they send in their, their, their soldiers, they say they are coming with their soldiers to liberate. But they Instead, use it for business. their soldiers are coming to occupy. To secure their position. Yes. They are occupying and really? doing what they want to do. They use it for business. So, these European, French people are very, they are the problems of African, this French African country. Let me say French African country. Yeah. If you look in Africa, every country that has its own currency, does not have the problem. It's more developed and more advanced than any of aspects. these African countries that are using the franc CFA. Because with your, with your money, you can do whatever you can. But you can debate, you can debate your money, you can debate Mr. your money is viral, you can divide Mr. The, 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 the value of your money. It's very clear because if you have to give 80% of your own uh, 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 income to France and you are remain with only 15%, 
then what can you do with that? You don't even percent? have a reserve. Your reserve each is time, there in France. Each time you need to, to, you need your own money. You go back to France. You, you show him you are reserve uh, 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 reports, and then ask for borrow. How can you go and borrow and, your and, own and, money? And that is another problem. They always come in that we are giving you people aid. We are it's giving not you aid. Loan. One loan. It's not aid and it's not loan. There's nothing like aid. Your Nobody money, does help anybody and anything. You back. They have the things that they have to benefit. That they come in that okay, we have given you people aid. They aid uh, the people, the, the citizens tax, the, 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 the citizens taxes. We are the people who are going to pay all that amount of money. So for whatever reason. The African leaders, all these old African leaders should get out of the way. We should have new pragmatic leaders who have the courage and have the mind for and have the interest of the people at heart to take over so that we can cut, uh, uh, we can cut a, a, a clear line from this colonial mas this col former colonial yeah. master. And then we'll do things our own way. If those African countries cannot stand up and do whatever they want to do, they will never be developed because these people don't even want you to study they don't want you to have brain they don't want you to question their authority no, no. they don't want you to know anything mr tower is very very clear because even if you see with the the the, the world bank today will borrow money to america for a five percent interest but will borrow money to africa for nine and ten percent interest and africa and america who needs money more so all of them, their interest is just to broke down, to put down Africans, to, to make sure that they see that the Africans should always be under their shoes. That is, those are the things that they do. That's why you see they take off uh, Sankara, they took off uh, uh, Muhammad Gaddafi, because Muhammad Gaddafi has stood for a unifying African currency. And thanks to uh, some of the lawyers in America that they have to do some investigation and get into Hillary Clinton's mail published from the papers that the main reason why they took off uh, uh, Gaddafi was that he was fighting. Now, uh, uh, Paul Gagami of, uh, of, Rwanda of Rwanda is still talking the same thing, that for the African countries to come out of this underdevelopment and poverty, the best thing for them is to do is to come out with a unique currency that can counter the euro and the dollars. If you don't have any country that, and if Africans do all that, now what are they going to do? They will go now. That's why you see uh, France is going around instigating uh, CDL to put an uh, embargo on Mali, to go to countries that they see that. You, how can you condemn somebody, the same person that you took, you took coup, at the same time, the other person took coup in Chad? When the president of Chad died, the son came on. You came and solicited and give your backing for something they brushed away the constitution eh? the constitution was completely wiped away and, and, and you came and you supported it now somebody is saying that he wants his country to stand and be free from you 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 go around to get people to put an embargo on the country and say he came to power under a coup Okay. Is there any difference from that? <laughs> it's, it's really funny. It's not, it's not. <laughs> you know, you know. Sometimes I I do sit down and think about what's actually the problem of Africa. You know, like if you look at the current ongoing agitations in Africa, you find out that so many part of Africa want to be country on their own, country of their own. They say, like we have that of Ambazonia, we have that of Biafra. We have that of uh, Kazamas and the uh, so part of so many, so many places in Africa. My question is, why can't they be country of their own? Let's let's take it for example. You know, before I talk about the three major problem of Africa, information. When you are not informed, you'll be misinformed. When you know human being, let me tell you something. Human being is just like you bring a glass of water now. You cannot call it a glass of water, or except when you pour water in it. When you pour water in it, it becomes a glass of water. Because if you pour wine, red wine in it, it's a glass of oh, wine. Oh, yeah. If you pour oil in it, it's a glass of oil. So we are only a makeup of information. And when we lack this information, we'll be misinformed. Sometimes we begin to attack ourselves over matters. Africa is the richest continent in the whole world. 
that Africa is where the raw life, the oxygen we have in Africa is not here. Here, they pay money to purify air. Where have they paid money to purify air in Africa? Have you seen that before? Look at the pollution and so many things in Africa. People are yet living healthy. But here today, everybody, we are all locked up with coronavirus. Governments are busy cooking up all kinds of lies and fake stories around coronavirus and this and this. Look at Africa where people are living on herbs. Who is suffering from coronavirus? So what I'm trying to say in effect is we are deformed. Africa is, is we lack the human base of life. And that is why it's very difficult for us. Now look at some people will come because of issue of diversities. They begin to cook up one story that this is the problem of Africa. No, the major problem of Africa is information that we lack. For example, now let's start up like example in Europe. Have you seen an Albanese man and Italian man fighting before? Have you seen a German man and Russian man fighting? But you always see Afro blacks fighting with bottles and knives. Why? Because we are missing form. That love is not there. That makeup of who we are is not there. Yeah, but the white man, because the white man likes it like that. Yes, he yes, they will like it. They, like they will like it. Do you know why they will like it? You know one thing I said before. I said when our base is weakened, the predators will always come in. The positivism there I talked about is all about the prey and the predators. The white man will always be happy to see that we are yes, always in disagree because we are misinformed. He, that we are always in loggerhead so that. He, he, he should be very happy and have you, glad have you, have you gone to never unite. Have yes, you gone to hospital? So have you it. gone to hospital here and do your DNA test? Have you gone to diagnose your DNA test? I don't want to go into the because of diplomatic issue. We are on life. But what I want to tell you is that Africa is the main base of this world. Take it or you leave it. But it's earlier we begin to understand that we are Africans. We begin to walk in love. You know, many people came, they brought the message, Africa, unite, and all that. We thought it was just ordinary music. But now, when you listen, you look at what they're saying, you begin to like, oh, wow. So what is in me was in someone else before, you know? So, so. That, that's it. <laughs> so when, when my brother said, how long shall they kill is our prophet? prophet? <laughs> Why we stand beside and look? Is he? Well, we were is, it that, is it happening today? We were thinking that Bob Marley was just singing, <laughs> but actually, today we are asking ourselves for how long should we sit and be looking at seeing the Europeans suppressing the Africans up and down? Well, uh, before anything, I would like us to have uh, some uh, publicity. Why the Regia will be sending us some uh, images on the screen so that we could have a bit of rest. So, Regia, catch you publicity. Thank you. Battistone Divisione Contract è un'azienda situata nel cuore del distretto Veneto. Specialisti nel settore hotel, alberghi, comunità, uffici, enti pubblici e privati ha saputo innovare e rinnovarsi dando vita a servizi di alta qualità. Specialisti del settore da oltre 40 anni nel campo dei montaggi, allestimenti, trasporti e traslochi garantiamo la massima affidabilità e competenza. Ogni esigenza del committente viene progettata da professionisti che si avvalgono di attrezzature di ultima generazione. La grande esperienza maturata in questi anni di operatività ci consente di gestire ogni tipo di cantiere con persone specializzate per ogni settore, dando inoltre continuità con il servizio di manutenzione. Per avere maggiori informazioni visitate il nostro sito www.battistondivisionecontract.com Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Actually, it's just to remind you guys, if, wherever you are, if you need to buy something, if you need to carry something, to transport something from one point to another, you should just think of uh, Batistan Translock Group. So if you go to your Google and you put www.translockbatistan.com, you know anything you buy from anywhere, you have it where you are without any problem. So count on that and we hope you guys are going to use it. So actually, you've seen 
we've been talking about this uh, suppression from France over African countries. I would like to say thanks really to Luigi De Mayo that uh, is really trying to see into the African problem. Dirò grazie veramente a Luigi Di Maio, perché lui proprio sta veramente incassarsi nei problemi dell'Africa. Perché questa espressione che France sta facendo sopra i paesi africani è troppo. Adesso dobbiamo, io chiederò alla regia per farci vedere, senti, sentire un po' cosa pensa eh, Luigi Di Maio con eh, 5 Stelle su questo problema. Se oggi noi abbiamo gente che parte dall'Africa è perché alcuni paesi europei con in testa la Francia non hanno mai smesso di colonizzare l'Africa. Ci sono decine di stati africani in cui la Francia stampa una propria moneta, il franco delle colonie, e con quella moneta si finanzia il debito pubblico francese. Se la Francia non avesse le colonie, perché così vanno chiamate, africane che sta impoverendo, sarebbe la quindicesima forza economica mondiale e invece è tra le prime proprio grazie a quello che sta combinando in Africa. Allora io ho smesso di fare l'ipocrita parlando come tutti quanti gli altri solo, delle solo degli effetti e di cominciare, ho deciso di cominciare a parlare esclusivamente delle cause. L'Unione Europea dovrebbe sanzionare tutti quei paesi come la Francia che stanno impoverendo gli stati africani e stanno facendo partire quelle persone perché il luogo degli africani è in Africa, non in fondo al Mediterraneo. Se vogliamo fermare le partenze cominciamo ad affrontare questo tema e cominciamo ad affrontarlo anche all'ONU, non solo in sede di Unione Europea e l'Italia si deve far sentire ed è per questo che adesso nelle prossime settimane ci sarà un'iniziativa parlamentare del Movimento 5 Stelle che impegnerà sia il governo italiano, sia le istituzioni europee e sia tutte le istituzioni diplomatiche sovranazionali a iniziare a sanzionare quei paesi che non decolonizzano l'Africa, perché quello che sta succedendo nel Mediterraneo è frutto delle azioni di alcuni paesi che poi ci fanno pure la morale. Macron prima ci fa la morale e poi continua a finanziarsi il debito pubblico con i soldi che, con cui sfrutta i paesi africani. Grazie, 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 grazie tanto Luigi. Speriamo bene che questo argomento proprio è una cosa che ci ha toccato in fondo. E credo che se tutti i paesi europei devono fare come Luigi pensa con la 5 Stelle, da lì anche l'Italia, i paesi africani devono avere, gli africani devono avere i loro posti in Africa, non in fondo di Mediterranea. Veramente perché questo è un problema che per questo problema della Francia fa uscire tutti gli africani che scappano dall'Africa. Actually, we have seen it that really the place for the Africans is not in the Mediterranean Sea, but it's in Africa. So if really other countries could stand up to talk about this situation like Italy is doing, then we think some of these European countries that they still keep on colonizing the African countries up to today, they will have some sanctions. Actually, Dr. Chief Obina, what do you think about this situation? Guarda, eh, mi approfitto di cambiare lingua su questo punto, perché ho trovato una cosa che, 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 che mi, ha, mi ha tirato un po' di testa. Non so se mi ha tirato giù o su, <ride> perché Luigi Di Maio ha spaccato, ha spaccato, mi ha fatto, non voglio vogarmi di usare parola eh, a un uomo di quattro coglioni, però dirò, dirò che lui è molto coraggioso, coraggioso, la verità. è la verità, è la verità, e quindi per me lui ha, ha svuotato il suo cuore, ne portando nel Vangelo di uomini, di italiani ai popoli tutto il mondo che stanno andando a Africa a rompere i coglioni, scusami tanto, però eh, questo punto qua lui l'ha toccato bene, giusto, che ognuno che, 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 che riesce a capire e digerire questa informazione può capire che gli africani non hanno la coppa, 
non hanno la copa perché hanno, sono distrutti perché, perché c'è mancanza di informazione, educazione, positivismo che li portano colonizzazione in Africa. Questo è un problema base e quindi voglio veramente mandare un, il mio apprezzamento a lui per queste informazioni. Dirò mai um, grazie. <ride> <ride> sono in breve tempo no, lui proprio ha spaccato il mondo ha spaccato giusto si dicono che uno deve tirarsi le palle e Macron è lì che parla che fa tutto da lì anche non, non lascia gli africani per entrare in Francia con loro soldi che loro hanno questi africani che vanno in Francia non vanno per, per chiedere prestito vanno per trovare quelli che la Francia ha preso da loro eh? Lui anzi, proprio ha detto quello che anzi, un uomo deve avere cuore per dire anzi, e sentirsi libera. Anzi, dobbiamo anche, dobbiamo anche chiedere ai nostri fratelli africani di non toccare la storia. Perché se noi lo approfondiamo nella storia, bisogna capire che le, 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 le tutti genetico mondiale sono roba africana. It's not Ma... easy, it's not easy, <laughs> Mr. Tawa. Oh, what do you say? Went right to the point, but I also still have some criticisms as far as he's concerned because uh, <coughs> he's talking now because they are, he's feeling the pinches and the pains are right, yeah. right in under his legs and he's feeling a lot of pain. These things, these are the things that we would have said it before now, some many years ago, because he has nothing in interest. He has not been able to colonize his own countries. That's why he's condemning his friend, and he has seen that. Now the whole problem, France, uh, Italy is the focal point where all the immigrants, they easily come in and the burden is on them. That's why he's talking. These are the type of statements that we need statements to stand up and talk to the other countries and make sure if you give independence, you give total independence. Stand up and allow these African countries to rule themselves the way they can rule themselves, manage their resources, and you will see out that they will come out successfully and will be Uh, competitors. We cannot have capitalism where only one person is the major part and the other person is just picking the crumbs from the ground. So Luigi, he should talk like that and all his other brothers should talk like that. But since so long as you don't feel the pain, most of them are not talking. He's telling us here that he's going to push ahead this agenda in the European Union. He should keep on fighting and pushing ahead this, this issue in the European Union. And he should And lobby other countries to side with him because without and France will fight with the last man standing because what France is benefiting he has said it there France, yeah, will, France be, will go against France him. would have been 15 position a poorest country in Europe but now France is one, one of the top one of the countries fight, yeah. with the resources he's, um, he's collecting, from, collecting Africa. from Africa so what we need to know because all these white people they are all the same as far as I'm concerned the moment We don't, Africa, we need, as they say, as Obama once said that, we need strong institutions, not strong leaders. We need strong leaders and strong institutions, all the same, all. Because if we don't have leaders who are charismatic, who, are, who have human feeling for their own country, who know where they are coming from, to stand and leave greed aside and fight for the independence of their countries, Africa will remain like this for more years. All these old people should walk out of the way and give the new generation the possibilities to maintain and do their things. Information. Obina, uh, please, uh, Dr. Um, Chief Obina talk about information. Who is going to give information to who? If you have the person that is going to give information, you give him the information because he's taking orders from other people. Yeah. So no what, freedom of speech. How, freedom, what do you want to say? You have to, we Africans, we have to take our... Liberty by force. By you, force. You, you don't, nobody gives you liberty. You grab it by force. You seize it by force. And that is what African leaders are supposed to do. You have to seize our independence from these European countries and stop them from uh, uh, mismanaging or taking our resources away from us and then keeping us the commerce to fight on and to feed on. So, you De Mayo, I will still congratulate him. At the same time, I will tell him that his statement is coming too late. Because these are the things that they would have been talking about But before you know, now. You know, Mr. Tawa, De Mayo is he, he's a young, he's a young guy. <laughs> you find his age. The, those people, those people before him, they could not think like him. Had it been that they have done it before, like maybe the situation would have been different today. So these are the kind of people we need. 
We need young people, young guys like this, both in Europe and in Africa, to rule the world. Those who can see and talk. Not those that they will see and they stay quiet, think only about their own personal interests. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Eh? Yeah. That's why you see in Africa, none of the African leaders could stand against France. Because as you talk, you are gone. As you go against France's decision, you are gone. Yeah, but the, majority, the problem is that we should keep fear and uh, intimidation aside. If, uh, uh, people, if some people must go for some other people to survive. Let me, let me, let so me. if you if all of us were always afraid that if you talk you are gone you are talk you are gone we will always remain in the same position. Let me, let me draw some let me draw a little approach to the current situation in my in my very present country. You know where I come from. Um, I'm from eastern part of Nigeria, and um, if 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 you just take your mind back, you find out that we fought wars and several wars and so many things has been going on in that country. But recently, do you know what happened? The, the young man who took up the, the mantle of uh, secession, and um, uh, he continued evangelizing on it, educating people historically and otherwise. So uh, recently, the guy embarked on a journey um, in Kenya, and Nigerian government informed some hoodlums. They got him arrested illegally. You know what I mean? They did not put him in the in the prison or cell in Kenya. Rather, they took him to unknown destination. They tortured him and messed him up. When they felt that the guy um, has lost consciousness, they now call Nigerian counterparts and handed the guy over to Nigeria in a sack bag. They brought him to Nigeria and uh, they, they remanded him in the custody of DSS, that is Department of uh, Security in Nigeria. They kept him there after he regained his consciousness and, uh, do you know, shamelessly, they brought him to court. And uh, the, 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 the Nigerian Minister of Justice came and announced that he was arrested with the help of Interpol and all that. Immediately, Nigeria British High Commission rebunked the information that, please, he was not uh, repatriated. There was no extradition process. You people knew how you got him because the gang is a, is a British citizen. They remanded him in the prison. From there, they start bringing him to court. So to you now, is this not, a, 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 what do you call this kind of thing? When I said that Africa lack information, how can educated chief of justice give such false information? Beside, no, be, be, plan, be, beside. It's a, plan, so it's a See, I, plan. No, no, I'm coming. It's that, not that, a mistake, it knows. I, no, I'm coming. That's why I said that we are misinformed. We are misinformed in in a judicial process. In a judicial process, if you want me to Nigeria, maybe to follow up a, 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 an error or an offense, or let me put it that way, that must be a tradition process. There was nothing like that. Somebody was kidnapped, <laughs> and he found himself in Nigeria prison up till now. Yeah, the that, whole world is keeping quiet, that, that, and that, they brought him to court. That is the that is the that is that, now, now, now that this, is what we are we are voking, uh, we are advocating. <laughs> now do you know what's happening? Now do you know what the is happening? The governments in Africa are doing the dictatorial system. They have so, the right. I, I want to tell you that, that's, they like. that's why I'm saying that the education is a problem of Africa. How can a president? How can chief justice? How can lawyers stand and bring somebody from 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 a illegal uh, 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 prison to court? What kind of judicial, judicial is that one? And they are also filing an amending charges against somebody without following a preliminary process of how come he came to that place. How do you look at the whole thing? Are we not in a mess? Don't you what? see that? That is why we are saying. <laughs> don't, you see that, don't you see that even in your own country you are not free? Don't you know that you can be moving on the road and the police intercept you and kill you and nobody will say because anything? We, are, we lack education. No, yeah, it's, it's not education. We don't lack the education. It's because somebody is using a heavy hand on us by force. We are misinformed. Yes. Everybody form. think that people don't know their right. Uh, uh, and if you know your right and stop when people stand in, in front in, of in, you in and law. arrest you and you say, I know my right and they brutalize you. Now let what, me what, let, doesn't let, mean that I don't know your right. Chief Tower, Chief Tower, mm -hmm. let, let, let's sound a bit professional yes. to me. Mm -hmm. Now that's what is called grand norms in, in the law. In law, that's what is called grand norms. And these norms are very fundamental. No case in the court, no judge can preside any case without preliminary issues. 
Do you understand me? How can somebody appear suddenly into a court from kidnapping zone? Well, you <laughs> see, <laughs> you see, you see, you those, see, those things, those things, Africa, those Africa things, is those a truth. Things, those Africa things, is a truth. You are looking at them as <laughs> abnormal things because you Africa are Africa is a cruise. But no, in Africa, <laughs> those things are very normal, normal things. They are very normal things that we see them on a daily basis. Those are the type of things that we are saying that we, it's not lack of information. You think that those people who've done those laws, they don't know those things. They know that they are violating the law, and they know that they can violate the they law and go freely on sport. The international community mm. condemn them. But, but that is a problem. <laughs> that, Obin, uh, Chief Obina, this is a problem why we, we are talking. Because in, in Africa, they give us wrong information, information. and wrong education. Yes. You understand? Yeah. Because like what there was, the, the Chief Judge was giving a report in the court, which is false. False. Is giving us wrong information. The matter supposed to be struck out. Believing that people just have to take from him as he is saying. Without little did he know that the British people, they are not African. And that's mm -hmm. why they went against his, his uh, report. Nobody could say the truth. So little let, did let, he know. Let, let him share AK for for seven. Actually, let him share AK for actually. For seven. Let us let us go and scatter the whole well, world uh, because there is so mess all over the whole world. Well, honestly, like, like what uh, <laughs> like what uh, 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 Luigi just said. Actually, we are asking on the human right and the United Nations to actually see into this situation between the France and the Africans. It's not only now that the Africans are dying on that France. Right from time immemorial, we have the situation in which France, during the war, France went to Africa and collected all the best shooters in Africa. And they came to Europe to fight for France against the Nazi troops in the Mediterranean coast. Yeah even against Italy, when up to, up to the date that we are talking, we, France, we don't know the end result of those troops. Yes, we know that 17,000 of them died in the case of, uh, against the Nazi government, against the Nazi troop. Some were being captured as war prisoners. And where are the rest? Up to the date, we are still waiting to hear from France. These are the kind of things that you see. France are suppressing the Africans and nobody is talking. Because up to date, even the United Nations that they say that they were the people to make peace for the world. Up to date, nobody has asked from France, where are those people? France has not given any result, any report to clarify the Africans. Those people were human beings. They call them the Tyrannists of Senegal. Some, of, some people will call them the sharpshooters of Africa. Where are they? So I would like the, my Regia to give us some images. Let's see just a few things of what happened during that time and where are we today with France. So Regia, you can give us the image. Remembering the French massacre of black soldiers at Charoy military camp 75 years on. Today, December 1st, 2019, marks exactly 75 years after the grand massacre of African colonial soldiers who fought to liberate France during the European Tribal War, also known as the Second World War. As part of I Gambia's effort to keep on honoring African heroes, we chose to remember our African commandos who fought to liberate France but were later paid back with painful execution for demanding what rightfully belongs to them. During the Second World War, a team of African soldiers referred to as Tirelier Senegalese, which translates as Senegalese sharp shooters, were recruited not only from Senegal, as the name suggested, but from a combination of African countries like Togo, Guinea, Mali, Senegal, Burkina Faso, Chad, Gabon, Ivory Coast, Central African Republic, and Benin, mostly against their will to be part of a multi-racial army to liberate France from the German forces. Black soldiers formed a larger part of the entire French army relative to the number of French soldiers involved. 
They were used to fight in Italy and along the Mediterranean coast. During the heat of the war, more than 17,000 black soldiers who were part of the General de Gaulle lead French army reportedly lost their lives in attempts to resist the Nazi invasion, with the remaining members captured as prisoners of war and locked up in a racist German camp. After the hard work, numerous deaths and massive contribution by the African troops, a grand propaganda scheme was set up to exempt all black soldiers from the final team that would later liberate Paris. Getting an all-white French troop to lead the operation became difficult because out of every French unit, there was about 60% black soldiers. The only French formation from which they could recruit a 100% white team was an armored division stationed in Morocco. They were transported to France on 1st August 1944 after numerous deliberations and were made part of the lead soldiers for the invasion just to sideline the contribution of black soldiers and create an avenue for French troops to headline the liberation. After this painful exclusion from the glorious moment, the black soldiers were sent back to Africa without pay and held in a demobilization camp in Charoy, Senegal. To worsen everything, the payment structure set to reward the soldiers was discriminatory and actually favors the white soldiers than the black. All these treatments attracted a protest during which they allegedly held a French general captive to help drive home their demands that the French failed to listen to. The soldiers demanded, among other things, an equal pay with their European counterparts, better treatment and also the release of their salary arrears. This protest was termed a rebellion against the French power, and in return, French soldiers opened fire on these unarmed black soldiers who were only protesting for their rights. According to war veterans, about 300 to 400 of them were reportedly killed on the 1st of December 1944, with a few survivors imprisoned, but the French recorded only 35 deaths in official documents after using deadly weapons like armored cars, machine guns, as well as a U.S. Army tank. This grand massacre was carried out at the blind side of the unsuspecting general public. Well, uh, I think we, we can say a oh, lot because up to now, we are still waiting for the France government to tell us where are the Tyrolean Senegals? Where are the sharpshooters of Africa? Till date, we don't know. Actually, Mr. Tawa, what uh, can you tell us about this uh, situation? Uh, it's very pathetic, uh, I'll tell you. And uh, I have to tell you with uh, all strength in me that France has always been an arrogant country a very self-centered country. It doesn't care, it doesn't respect. They are one of the founding fathers of the uh, uh, um, propagating uh, human rights. Without, they don't respect human rights one inch. I will bring you an example of this type of things that are happening even right to today in our present face. On the 10th of January 2001, French troops bombarded uh, a certain place in Mali called uh, Jihadist Base. Okay. That bombardment was later found out uh, through investigation by the United Nations and it came out that it was a family marriage that was taking place. And they did, they bombarded it. That was a collateral accident. And the United Nations asked France to apologize because even America, when America was fighting Iraq, America tried some uh, soldiers because they went and shot at people. France never apologized up to date. 
Again, when France armored troop was moving to Mali and Burkina Faso, Burkina Faso uh, soldiers and uh, Malian soldiers, they stopped those convoys. The um, French soldiers, they removed their guns and shot at uh, uh, demonstrators. Today, this today, this present day, and nobody said nothing. And they never apologized. And no European country said nothing. The United Nations came out and again and talked, and nobody said anything. So this, to me, is not surprising. The African man, our great-grandfathers, have been the people who have built this Europe like this, right from the time of slave trade. If the African soldiers were not there, General de Gaulle wouldn't have, uh, Germany would have taken no France yeah. completely. And for them to come and pay and negotiate and pay their family, the best thing for them is to eliminate these people so that there should be no compensation. No for compensation. Them. They, they, they fought for them. No salary. And then after fighting, they had to take them back to make their own camp in Africa. Uh -huh. Why you wouldn't understand? they uh, let them, let in, them be in, in France? France. They took them back to Africa. Then they were giving them food different from the white soldiers, paying the white soldiers differently from them. Why should they do all this just because of what? Because of their color? No, these people, mm -hmm. these French, as far as I'm concerned, these French people are not people to even associate yourself with them in anything because everything they do, they do for their own interest. For their interest. If there's nothing that they get, they are going to have gays there. They don't go there. You look in Africa, even where there are wars in Africa, if France doesn't see his interest, he doesn't care. Okay, now, he, they are talking so much about Mali, 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 Mali. They, we have the same problem there in Ukraine. Why are they not talking about Ukraine? When what is their the interest Ukraine in Mali? Let uh -huh. them leave they Mali They know that the they, cannot go, they cannot go to yeah. Ukraine. They now they know that where are they going to get uranium? Uranium, all the best, the highest country in the uranium is, is Mali. Already from the beginning, Mali did not sign the treaty they wanted Mali to sign. So Mali is not even part of them. Why are they, what are their interests over Mali? So you see these French soldiers, I just pity our great grandparents who fought for these people. And that's why I've said, the Africans, no, let nobody, like the other day I saw over the TV and the Facebook, Africans, immigrants struggling to go to, we, they have the right to go to any of these European countries. Because even King Leopold of, of, of Belgium, Killed thousands and millions of millions, more than 10 million uh, uh, Congolese. Yeah. Carry their goals and goals. Take, get their goals there and go and build Belgium with. And today they say we should not come, the, the, the Africans should not come to Europe. Why should they not come to Europe? Well, actually, we can see that uh, the Africans are coming to Europe somehow. Some people will say that they are coming to take back the colonial debts. <laughs> that is to collect back what the Europeans collected from them some years ago. But it's not actually, it's not easy to see that before they were forcing the blacks, carrying them with force to Europe without passport. But now that the Europe has turned, they have to implement passport now for the blacks to come to Europe. So actually it's something that if uh, the Rigia would like, I would really like the Rigia to show, to bring to us, let's see how people are struggling to get to France. The same France that is killing our economy in Africa. I think that if, if there is a means, then all the Africans should go to France. Really, because we are tired of the suppression that we are, we are getting from France. The Africans now are moving to France and the France Policemen are blocking them from even entering to France. We would say thanks to the Italian government that is even trying, they are trying to give them food where they were being blocked by the French government. Regia, please, if you can send it up to us, let's see it and actually know what is happening. We are not going back! We need to pass! A group of around 100 migrants from Africa have been prevented from crossing from Italy into France in the border town of Vintimiglia. The migrants staged a sit-in on Saturday after around a dozen French police blocked their path. The officers said they had received orders from the regional Alp Maritime Prefecture not to let the migrants pass because they didn't have any papers. 
We risked our lives crossing the Mediterranean. It was hard. This is nothing. But we do need aid and there's nothing, no humanity. We're ready to cross the sea again. We're ready to die. The Italian Red Cross have been handing out some food. The organization said the migrants had started to arrive on Thursday after traveling from the south of the country. Some are reported as wanting to go to France, others to Switzerland, Germany and some to the UK. Well, uh, well you've seen Mr. Tower. Those are Africans trying to get into France and they were being stopped by the French policemen. Actually, for what? Uh, Mr. Dimo, uh, I will always thank the Italian government for they are doing a marvelous job to accommodate all these immigrants that are coming in through Italy. It's not easy to take care. They, we saw the, the minister there, Luigi, very, very, very ferocious and, uh, and, and, and angry. angry. Yeah. Because now that these French people are causing problems in Africa, when the African people even struggle, the few that struggle to even get into France, they don't want the people to come in. But you go to all African countries, I tell you, you they have French citizens living there. You go to every military, they have these French, they have. 5,000 soldiers in, in Mali. In Benin, they have soldiers. In Cameroon, they have soldiers. In, 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 in uh, uh, Ivory Coast, Gabon, oh, Chad. The 54 some countries of yes, it, And your citizens are living in senior service houses, getting the best life. And then when two or three Africans, they want to come to their country here, they, they say, no, don't come to our country. You want these guys to go to where? At this situation here. What if you the are not, Italian if, if, you're not in, in, if you are not inhuman? How can you refuse somebody yeah. who has already reached your doorstep that you should not enter your house? Where you see that this person is ready running, he has, he has run away from the mouth of a lion. It's, it's inhuman. All you can do is you have to permit these guys and give them a residence and do something for them to survive. The phone is even that, Mr. Tower. They blocked them from entering, not that they were giving them food. If not of the Italian Red Cross. The Italian government that were there to give those guys food. The France government, they don't care. That's why I say mm -hmm. I will they always don't give photos to Italian to Italy because Italy has always done a lot to accommodate these uh, uh, immigrants. Even though they say Italy, we always give them kudos for that because they have never sent these people, they don't refuse them, they give them water, they take give their boats, they, they go in, they carry those that are still inside the water, they try to remove them, mm? they bury, they give a burial ground for them, they bury those who are dead, you know. But all these European countries, this uh, uh, France and Britain, who are the main cause for the problems we are having in Africa, if the African leaders do not mobilize themselves, stand up like one person, and chase this uh, European uh, neo-colonialist colonialist out of Africa. We will never have a safe, a safe heaven. And everything is there in Africa. Without Africa, there's no, no Europe. That's true. So what do you have to say, well, Mr. Uh, Chief Obinna? Well, uh, I'm standing on the existing protocols because um, I've been following all that we've been saying. We are in the same ship, you know? So, um, as you can see, the problem of Africa today, we are trying to measure them in different uh, parts, um, on our own side and international side. But the, it still remains that when, when one's house is not in order, when one's house is not in order, the visitor cannot stay. But when your house is in order, the visitor will be careful what to do and when and how, you know? So I still believe that we Africa have to preach this uh, 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 information, you know, at the same time, because as they say, charity begins at home. Now we are here in this community, we we'll begin to look at African base within our own association. First of all, uniting ourselves, carrying the message across at the same time, see what we can be able to do for our African base. 
okay. because we are really contributing great in this country and we spit in that same measure should be given unto us thank you sir well uh, as we can see the problem of uh, dr chief obina is just that the african they need to unite themselves they need to have vital information and they need to actually keep with their culture we know actually it's not easy to maintain all these things because so long as you are not free to do what you want, then you can never do it. It's just like your father will lock you a door and you want to go in. Yes, you want to go in, but how can you go in? Because if you broke the door, you are in problem. So it's something that is not easy for the Africans. But all what we would like to say is just that let's be careful and let's try to talk to our leaders, they should know really that uh, it's not easy, but they should work for the people and not for themselves. Well, before we go out of uh, time, I would really like us to, to remind our brothers and sisters who are around Europe to take good care with their masks. When they, when they are talking of somebody going out, you should put on your mask. You should know that actually something that is really, really important. Even if you know you've, you've been vaccinated, you have all the vaccine, but you must be careful because the mask is not only for you. It protects even you from other people and protects you from other people. So what we are just crying is just that we should try to avoid problems. If the Regia would like us to see some little problem that some of us went into because of deciding not to put on a mask. We should avoid not to get into such problems. Regia, please. No, 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 it costs 400 euros, the mask. Why don't you not have the mask? Yes, the law is this. If you do it with this, you resist. It's not a problem. How much does it cost? It's not a problem. The mask? Do you have it? No. Take it. 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 No. No. Sì, è posto, eh? Ufficio, o scendi o ti porti in ufficio e ti denuncio. O scendi o ti porti in ufficio e ti denuncio. Muoviti. Vai in ufficio, ecco, scusa. Sì, in ufficio polizia. Perché non hai la mascherina giusta? Quindi cosa fai? Italiana polizia. Ok, se non ti va bene la polizia italiana, che vai da un bar. Vai, piano, piano. Oh, e cosa? Vai, piano. Well, uh, as you can see, that's a young man who went into the train and is refusing to put on the particular mask which uh, by law is supposed to put on before could, he could enter the train. So, actually, Mr. Tawa, what can you say about this situation? Well, uh, I'll just have to remind our African brothers and all of us uh, foreigners that anywhere we are, we must learn to respect the rules of law. We must always take what the government gives and attend to it deliberately. You must not run into problems when you could have avoided the problem. If the law says put on your mask every day on the road, you have to put it on. You go around with your green pass, you have to go around with your green pass. These are simple things. Some of us, we just uh, look warm about things that are very, very vital and, and they can cause us some uh, no difficulties in the future. So it's, it's not a matter of showing who I am, what I can do, how strong I am. It's something that is affecting the whole country, the whole world and everybody and the coronavirus is real. If you don't care about yourself, know that other people care for themselves yeah. because even if you don't put the mask there, it's not only for you, your own self that you are looking upon. It can cause damage to some other people. So that is why. So it's not, as you said, it's not only to protect yourself, it's protecting yourself and protecting the other person, the opposite spouse. spouse. So if we are living, these are some of the things that we always run into in this, most of these countries that we find ourselves. We must always learn to respect the laws of the place where we live in. If they say, don't do this, don't do it. If they say, do this, do it. It's not something that's going to cause you. And that is some of the things that
people come to with their background information or their attitude from somewhere from where they come from they think that's everywhere no it doesn't work like that if ev everybody cannot be a vagabond if you want to be a vagabond you be a vagabond in your do in inside your, your house. house don't <laughs> go in a public in a public place a public place i don't know if you will give me more time but let me just round up immediately because i don't know how much time just to say hello to our Cameroonian brothers who are around, and to my family, the OS family, the OS Coliliano, which is a great uh, association working with the government here in Veneto, doing their best in trying to uh, inform our brothers and sisters who are coming in, who are in Italy, about the activities, how they should accommodate themselves, how they should live, how they should uh, adapt themselves with the system of Italy. So everybody who is a new person, or oh, somebody who is coming in, or if you don't know, or if you are an old person, know that there is an association called Os Coliliano here with the headquarters via Manin. So if you want to get, get yourself entangled with this association, you can always meet Mr. Ngonga Emmanuel, or you can meet me, then we will see how we can get you registered. So thank you for the evening. Thank you for giving me this great opportunity. And I think what we have discussed today uh, some important vital uh, issues will be taken into consideration and uh, Africa is going to be great and uh, uh, emancip emancipate themselves from that mental slavery that we are living in. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tawa. So, Chief Obina, what do you have to tell the people before when, we are leaving? Uh, when, um, let me just You know, um, it still borders on information too, because uh, ignorance is on both sides, both in Africa, both here. And um, a lot of people were informed, and a lot of people at the same time were misinformed. So regarding to the guy who was sitting and without mask, you know, I want to put myself in that aspect, like, I start working every day, early morning, around four or five, finish in the afternoon with mascarina, you know? Um, in fact, a lot of us are beginning to develop sickness now. Sickness of sinosis because of mascarina, sickness of kidney, and sickness of uh, cancer, which is yet to come, because it's difficult for one to take out uh, carbon dioxide and still take the same carbon dioxide in. It's very, very difficult. So I'm very, very sorry that sickness, uh, this called coronavirus, is ravaging the whole world. But at the same time, government is failing. Government is not working in line with the system of education. Because if one is to walk in the street with mascarina, you know, I think that should be a, a, a measure of, um, you know, what the Italians they call risachimento, risachimento sociale. It, it, like, if government is taking their responsibility and this sickness uh, is here, the so-called coronavirus, government will say, okay, let's be responsible for people. First of all, we need to educate people about this coronavirus. Before you take this vaccine, some information will be passed to you because it's, 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 it's degrading and, and heartbreaking for one to go to a place and sit down. You don't know the language they give you. They say, Fema qui, Fema qui, Fema qui. You Fema, Fema, Fema. They are, uh, you have diabetes, no? You have headache, no? Uh, you have stomach running, yes. They give you vaccine. What is the content of this vaccine that we are taking? And what will be the real outcome, the outcome, the future outcome of this vaccine? It's something that I'm very, very much worried about. It's something that I'm being traumatized about the situation. Now we are taking vaccine. After we take the first, they say you have to take the second. We've taken second. Now third, we are taking third. And after third, we we'll still take fourth. And after fourth, we take fifth. So it's quite, government is a total disgrace to the whole world. In as much as somebody is sitting in the train and is traveling on a long journey, maybe going to spend like eight hours with mascarina, at the end of the day, nothing is paid to you. You don't have anything. No way that government is showing responsibility to your well-being that you will say, okay, let me just suffer for this well, because of but, uh, what I'm, I'm getting. 
Chief, there is one thing too, because it's not only you wearing mascarina. You might still go into that train for a journey of eight hours, you are fine, and you go in there without mascarina, and you get something from another person. So I, I won't blame the government to one side. To the other side is to protect yourself from other people, and also not to, to protect you too from giving what you have to others. So I think that the government is trying to protect us in such, with such decision. But the general analysis, the general analysis of this protection, there will be information. So that when they, when they for example now, we, during our, sorry to disturb you, the place where we work, if you use iron guanti, the money they pay you is different. If you work in the night, government pay you majority not there. It's true or false. If you use uh, some some material, that money will be given. If you use knife, they will be pay you. So putting okay. on mascarine, I'm not against putting it, but government should take responsibility of the finances. Okay, okay. They're molesting people. After all, the, the emergency is called decreto. It's not law. Okay, as we can see, actually, Chief Obina is really against the, <laughs> the decision of putting on knife. No, no. But we are going to talk more on that in the, on the next program where we are going to talk about uh, the COVID uh, situation, the COVID problem. So I would just want to say I'm sorry for you guys that uh, to take in more of your time. It's just because actually the topics of today has taken us uh, unaware. So. I'm sorry that I've consumed more of your time, and I just hope you've, I filled you with the information I wanted to pass through. And I believe that with the decision and the discussion of today, something actually will be done for the liberation of the African countries, really, from France. Well, uh, without me saying much, I would like to say we'll call it off for today. We've come to the end of uh, the program, and I will say see you next week. Next Saturday, we are going to discuss a new topic. The topic we are going to discuss next week will be the Africans who are leaving Africa for Europe, any part in Europe, and as soon as you get to Europe, some of them, they don't tell actually what is happening, what are their present situation in Europe. And they make some Africans back home to feel that they are good, they are fine, whereas things are not easy with them. But I just want the Africans to know that Europe is not easy. In Europe, you still have to struggle to do it. So we are going to discuss with this about this topic next week, Saturday. So I will ask the Regia to give us the publicity why we are going off for today. And I hope the publicity will take you guys through and see you next Saturday. Take care, see you. Thanks for the day. Afro Cuatro. <laughs>azienda situata nel cuore del distretto Veneto. Specialisti nel settore hotel, alberghi, comunità, uffici, enti pubblici e privati, ha saputo innovare e rinnovarsi dando vita a servizi di alta qualità. Specialisti del settore da oltre 40 anni nel campo dei montaggi, allestimenti, trasporti e traslochi, garantiamo la massima affidabilità e competenza. Ogni esigenza del committente viene progettata da professionisti che si avvalgono di attrezzature di ultima generazione. La grande esperienza maturata in questi anni di operatività 
ci consente di gestire ogni tipo di cantiere, con persone specializzate per ogni settore, dando inoltre continuità con il servizio di manutenzione. Per avere maggiori informazioni visitate il nostro sito www.battistondivisionecontract.com We don't tire, we know what 